Armchairs No Waiting, episode number 425, The Real George Lindsay. Two Chairs No Waiting is brought to you each week by the fine folks over at Weaver's Department Store. There's several new items over at Weaver's, so go over and check it out. We've got the Barney Fights Back t-shirt. It's got Barney on there. It says, you better gird your loins, buster. you got a fight on your hands. <laughs> also got the Andy Kindness t-shirt. It's a great shirt. Uh, it's got Andy Griffith on the cover. You'll love it. Or on the front, not the cover. And there's also the Barney's Fleece Blanket and a whole bunch of other Barney face stuff. So head over to Weaver's Department Store and check it out. Two Chairs No Waiting is also brought to you by donations from listeners just like you. The executive producer of episode number 425 is my friend Rob Jones. Rob Jones. Hello, everybody. I'm Alan Newsom, your host for Two Chairs No Waiting. And it is always so fun to be with you right here in Mayberry. Thanks for joining me and uh, just having a conversation and enjoy ourselves. Now, this past week, uh, this past weekend for me, it was May uh, May 6th, 2017. It was this past weekend. Well, that was the fifth anniversary of the passing of uh, George Goober Lindsay. Now, Mayberry fans know George, uh, you know, in his persona of Goober Pyle. But they may not know the real George Lindsay. So I thought we would... Uh, we go into that on this episode of the podcast. George always found time to support good causes. That's the kind of guy he was. And the cause that was closest to his heart was the Special Olympics. His annual George Lindsay Celebrity Golf Weekend raised over a million dollars for Alabama Special Olympics from 1973 to 1988. Uh, on the 20th of April... 1986, the 14th annual George Lindsay Celebrity Benefit was held at Arrowhead Country Club, and a friend of mine, who is our executive producer tonight, Rob, Rob Jones, was in attendance as a volunteer. He attended. He was volunteering there uh, to help out for the event, and as fate would have it, on this, the anniversary, the fifth anniversary weekend, on the 7th, I was at Sunday school, actually, Rob brought to me a program that was the program from uh, the George Lindsay 14th anniversary, 14th annual, I should say, golf tournament. Now, this is uh, this was pretty cool to have. And uh, Rob brought it to me. It just happened to be that it was the weekend that I was thinking about George anyway and his passing five years ago. So this was a real, I don't know if you call it a coincidence or it's just fate that that happened. But on that, in that magazine, you know, as I was talking, there's uh, the golf tournament. As I said, it started long, long before this, back in 73. Is when it started, but this is uh, the 14th one. And in it, on page 17, there's an article called, Who is the Real George Lindsay? So I wanted to share that with you for this episode, because I think, I think you're going to enjoy it. I know I did, uh, just reading through it, and it's going to be a lot of fun uh, just if you don't know, because there's so many things that I have read over the years or knew about that I always think all of you know that you, you know, you've been told and you may not have. So I wanted to start trying to do a better job of making sure that all these little things that I've heard over the years that I tell you about them. So this is one that I think you'll enjoy. So let's go and just learn a little bit more about George. He's as country as Goober, the clown prince of Mayberry RFD. He's as urban as the shimmering lights on Broadway, and his humor bridges the gap between both worlds. He will, in a word, entertain you to tears. George Lindsay is the rarest of entertainers. 
He's a genuine enigma whose very contradictions are at the core of his success. In a career spanning more than two decades, George Lindsay has done it all. From bib overalls to Broadway, from gas station in Mayberry to the cornfields of Hee Haw, a timeless thread of humor is lent a common theme to his varied endeavors. In each instance, the audience has come out the clear winner, walking away from their Lindsay encounter with a treasury full of laughter and satisfaction. The Jasper, Alabama native first arrived in Hollywood from New York in 1962 to film Ensign Pulver for director Joshua Logan. During his first two years in Tinseltown, Lindsay appeared on over 40 television shows, primarily playing heavies. In 1964, George met Andy Griffith, and the popular Goober character was scripted for the Andy Griffith show and then for Mayberry RFD. George co-starred on both series for over seven years, firmly endearing himself to an entire nation of viewers. On an impulse, Lindsay dropped by Nashville Studios of Hee Haw in 1971 to say hello to some friends. The show's producers asked George to do a couple of lines for the taping and a 15-year role in the series was spawned. Over the years, Lindsay has been a featured cast member whose contributions range from writing and singing to sketches, pratfalls, and one-liners. Among his other television appearances, and there are a lot of them, Alan's throwing that in, are Chips, Herbie the Love Bug, MASH, Fantasy Island, Flo, The Tonight Show, Merv Griffin, Hollywood Squares, Mike Douglas, Laugh-In, David Frost, a Showtime Cable Special, the Tulsa Music Festival, Jack Parr, Steve Allen, Moving On, Wonderful World of Disney, Craft Music Hall, Vanacek, oh my goodness, I'm going to have to uh, get a drink of water as I'm reading all these. <laughs> all right, so let's keep going. Uh, Gunsmoke, Alfred Hitchcock, The Twilight Zone, The Rifleman, Loretta Young, and a variety of guestings with Glenn Campbell, Johnny Cash, Jonathan Winters, Danny Thomas, and Chet Akins. Wow, he's been on everything, hasn't he? George has also starred in his own special, the Orange Blossom Special, and his own pilot, Goober and the Paradise Truck Shop. Uh, stop, I'm sorry. Lindsay's motion pictures credits include Take This Job and Shove It, Ensign Pulver, Snowball Express, Charlie and the Angel, Treasure of Matacumbi, The Rescuers, Robin Hood, The Aristocats, and Cannonball Run 2. Film and television aside, Lindsay boasts a thorough background in theater. He is an accomplished actor, a graduate of the respected American Theater Wing in New York, as a co-star of two musical Broadway musicals, All American and Wonder Town. George has earned accolades for his stage presence and startling versatility. A unique niche has been carved by Lindsay as an MC and a guest speaker whose warm manner and comedic appeal enhances any program. Countless crowds were entertained by his shows at the World's Fair 
where the enormous venue allowed him to reach nightly audiences in the thousands. He's hosted the World Country Music Festival in London, served as national spokesman for major corporations, and starred at headliner hotels in Las Vegas, Reno, and Lake Tahoe. A peek at the private side of George Lindsay reveals a bright and compassionate humanitarian. He's a college graduate and a member of the Alabama Sports Hall of Fame. He served as commencement speaker on numerous occasions and has also lectured at Texas Christian University, the University of Alabama uh, Drama Departments, both of them. The recently aired NBC movie, Return to Mayberry, was a tremendous success in the ratings and also a highlight of George's career. In short, George Lindsay is a true star at home in any constellation, whether it be comedy, drama, charity, or education. George can cover the bases like no one else. But a final word of warning is always in order. No funny bone in America is immune from his reach. That's who the real George Lindsay is or was. He's definitely missed. I sure do miss him. And he's remembered on this fifth anniversary of his passing with a smile and a laugh. Because George Lindsay is always there for us every time we turn on the Andy Griffith Show and watch it. Or maybe RFD if we get lucky enough to catch it in a rerun. He's surely missed, but never forgotten. All right, so I hope you guys enjoyed that. That was a really neat story, I thought, and I just thought it was really neat to find that in this uh, magazine. There are all kinds of things you can find out about George. You know, as you know, he did the uh, George Lindsay UNA Film Festival. Is yet another of his accomplishments over his career. He's uh, These are some fun things you may not know about. He got his doctorate. Honorary degree of uh, Doctor of Humane Letters. He was awarded that by the University of North Alabama on December the 18th, 1992. That says, just in the uh, first sentence here, it says, From Jasper to Mayberry, from Broadway to Hollywood, you have represented your alma mater with consistent goodwill and humor. And it goes on to say a lot more about him. He, uh, he got his doctorate. And being a Superman fan, as I am, George also uh, got the Metropolis Super <laughs> Superman Award. He got an award, Superman of Metropolis Award. I, that is awesome. But George got that as well uh, from the city of Metropolis that George evidently was able to go to, which I thought was pretty cool back in 1997. So George got the... Uh, an award there as well. And it was actually given to him by, it's signed anyway, by Clark Kent. So Clark Kent actually presented the award. And I don't know who he is. I think he's a reporter for a great metropolitan newspaper. I'm not sure. But I think that's who that is. But he got the Superman Award from uh, Clark Kent. I thought that was pretty cool. Uh, some of these things uh, that I'm talking about, they are on display at the University of North Alabama in the George Lindsay Collection in the library there. So if you're ever at the library at the University of North Alabama, be sure and drop by there and check it out. So, all right. So I hope you guys enjoyed that. That, uh, But I just, I really I tell you, George, he's one of those that every time I see a, an episode with him on it, I, I miss him. He was a good friend uh, to Mayberry fans everywhere. And he was definitely someone that uh, I've missed. Now, if you if you don't if you want to know more about him, there's uh, if you go to the front page of imayberry.com, 
you go there and click on the link, if you scroll down, there's a link there that says Memorials. It's down toward the bottom of the page, but it says Mayberry Memorials. When you go there, uh, there's a George Lindsay section you can click on and you can go and it's, it's, the, it's his obituary, but it, has, it is a very good write-up about all the amazing things that George did in his career. And uh, I would encourage you to head over there and check it out. Uh, it was uh, released upon his death, uh, but it's a it's a very good write up. There'll be a link in the show notes uh, for it. Uh, you know, he was he was a special guy. All right, so that was uh, we're celebrating again. He passed away, uh, not celebrating, but remembering George. He was born December seventeenth, nineteen twenty eight, and he passed away on May sixth. 2012 so there we go all right guys uh we have more more information for you and it is time to head over to the gomer and goober pile comic book literary guild mm, got it facebook page uh head over to hear what randy turner has to say so let's head over and check it out <laughs> Welcome to This Week in Mayberry History, a report by special correspondent Randy Turner of the Gomer and Cooper Pyle Comic Book Literary Guild of the Mayberry Historical Society. On May 3rd, 1965, the final black and white episode of The Andy Griffith Show first aired. Titled Banjo Playing Deputy, it introduced the character of Jerry Miller to Mayberry, an out-of-work former one-man band with a carnival passing through town. Don Knotts had already agreed to star in a series of family-friendly films for Universal, having investigated that option as he originally thought the Indy Griffith show would be ending after five years. As was often the case in Mayberry when a character left, there was no announcement of the fact. The character just simply wasn't in town anymore. It significantly happened with Ellie Walker, and it happened with Barney Fife. Don Knotts had already made his final appearance as Barney in the episode Opie Flunk's Arithmetic two weeks earlier on April the 19th. When Jerry was introduced in Banjo Playing Deputy, Aunt B learned he was from Morgantown, West Virginia, a nod to Don Knotts' actual hometown, and the son of people she knew. Jerry was awkward and stammered as he spoke, with a habit of needing to search for the occasional word that caused others to have to helpfully fill in the gap with the missing word themselves. After agreeing to let Jerry help around the courthouse since Bernie was away, Jerry eventually put on a spare uniform without permission and went out to patrol the carnival. After he unsuccessfully tried to break up a fight between two men there, and Andy was going to let him go, Aunt B pointed out that Barney was far from perfect as a deputy. After being given another chance, Jerry eventually proved he could be an asset. Jerry was played by Jerry Van Dyke, Dick Van Dyke's younger brother. At that point in his young career, Jerry had already been offered the starring role of Gilligan on Gilligan's Island but turned it down as he thought little of the scripts. When he was brought into the Andy Griffith show at the end of the fifth season, it was a trial run to see how he might work as a possible new deputy, since Don Knotts would not be returning. Andy Griffith and the show's producers were pleased with the result and offered Jerry the job. I know there are some fans who do not care for the character of Jerry Miller. I personally feel he could have become a successful addition to the cast if the writers had written scripts suited to Jerry's gentle, inept character who was still brave enough to fight for what was right. He was a funny, endearing character and far enough away from the previous character of Barney Fife. But, as we know, that is not what happened. Jerry made a decision he has since said he regrets and he turned down the part to star in his own show. Mayberry instead got the new deputy, Warren Ferguson. And Jerry? 
He starred in My Mother, the Car, a show about an attorney who owned an antique car possessed by his deceased mother, a show often ranked by critics as the worst fiction TV series of all time. In later years, Jerry, of course, co-starred as Luther in the popular series Coach and has had a successful career with many TV credits, including many recurring characters, such as in the current show, The Middle. But things would have been so different had he decided to stay in Mayberry. That's it for this week. As always, thanks for listening. And remember to take Andy's advice and go out there and act like somebody. Ah, thank you, Randy. That was a great report. Remember, Randy puts out a daily version of uh, This Week in History called Today in Mayberry History. Wow. what a, <laughs> That's a great name since it's daily. And you can get it at the Gomer and Goober Pile comic book literary guild facebook page if you'd like to be reminded of when those are coming up you can go to you can send an email to turnersgrade at gmail.com and make sure you don't miss a single update from randy great job randy thank you i know our folks here on the on the podcast have been writing in calling in and saying they very much have enjoyed the uh reports by uh randy so uh Keep the keep the notes coming, uh, the emails coming, the voicemails coming, because I know Randy uh, likes the encouragement and loves to hear from it. Matter of fact, I like it too. So feel free to give me a call at 888-684-8415. Tell me what you think about the show. Think about the podcast, what you like, what you don't like. Well, mostly what you like. I, I, don't, I don't know if I want to hear what you don't like. <laughs> Tell us what you think about Randy's segments. What about uh, the other parts of the show? I'd love to hear from you. It's always fun to hear back from those that I get to talk to. So I'm talking to you. I'd love to hear from you. So give me a call, 888-684-8415. Email me at floyd.imayberry.com or head over to twochairsnowaiting.com and leave a message there. Thank you to all our patrons at Patreon. Thank all of you guys for helping support the show. Head over there and support the show if you enjoy what I do. It'll help keep it going. Folks, until next time, we'll see you here on Two Chairs.